So this week you have a time value of money project that is due um, and it's it's going to be in Excel. So I for test three, I want you guys all to use your financial calculators and use those time value of money keys for the N, the IY, the PV, the PMT, and the FV. But I want to show you in Excel that Excel also does all those functions. So really like the tables that the publisher provides are so dated. There's so many other ways to calculate these time value money computations. So we use the calculator because it's just the easiest for all students to have either the calculator or the app on their phone. Um, but Excel is something that especially if as business and accounting majors, you are going to use Excel so much when you get into the work world that it is good to understand it now. So if I open up the Excel project, it's already all created for you in Excel. So um, as you go in here, and if I go up to the top, I have instructions that say you've got to just fill in the correct values into the gray blocks. If we if I click if I put my cursor on that yellow look up here in the in the um, like dialog box you see that there's a formula in there so it's the future value formula and then it's picking up from these particular cells so I don't want to do this exact problem um, so we'll kind of just switch it up but if but if like let's say the problem said that Jordan inherits a um, hundred thousand dollars even. So we got, he has $100,000 today. So that goes into our present value. Um, is there any payments? He's not receiving any payments. He just received that amount today, so there's no payment. The number of compounding periods, it's quarterly in 20 years. So that would be four times 20. So notice I'm putting it in like a formula. You could just do it on your calculator and put in the answer you should get to the same um, number um, as you the same result and then our interest rate is eight percent compounded quarterly now the difference between this problem and say in your calculator it does want you to put it in the decimal so it's going to be the 0 0.08 divided by four and that is our rate. So then it does convert it into a, into a decimal. And then you could use your um, calculator to double check that, to make sure that you got the same answer. Um, but then you could feel comfortable like, hey, I could use Excel to solve these because Excel really does. It again is a time saver as long as you know how to build those um, problems and I'm going to just double check it on my calculator to make sure so if I put in 80 as my n 2 as my iy but remember the calculator doesn't require it to be in a decimal excel does require it to be in a decimal um, $100,000 is my present value no payment and then compute the future value and I get that exact same answer so then you know you're comfortable so that's going to be what you want to do. So you want to go through, read these problems, fill in the gray boxes. Don't do anything to the yellow box because the yellow box has your formula and then move on down to the next one. So again, you fill in the gray boxes. Don't touch the yellow box and play around with Excel, just like how I did where I put I put in the computations like the equals four times 20 to get to the N. Um, and then I did the uh, 0.08 divided by 4 to get to the IY. Let, the, let Excel do it for you just so you can see how like user-friendly it is um, to use. And then if you ever mess up a formula, just start over. You know what I mean? Close it out and open up a new template and start, start over so that you, you don't have to necessarily wor worry about rebuilding any of those formulas. So that's kind of the point of the exercise um, is to is to kind of show you that you can use Excel. It's very similar to the calculator, um, but it's just another way to get to those answers. OK, good luck.